Hello everyone, this is Dimitri from Nuzzles Games and welcome back to part 5 of our ongoing devlog series where we're going to be porting our Unity game Hate Me Not to Godot. So let's get started. So a very quick reminder if you haven't seen our previous videos, our game is called Hate Me Not and we initially started making this game during the GMTK Game Jam 2023 in Unity but because of recent events we decided to port it over to Godot. This is the state that the game was before the porting started. So this is a Unity version, you have a very basic menu here, some animated UI elements which are made using a sprite files. If you start the game you have this kind of ghost here that needs to protect this uh, yin-yang artifact from getting attacked by these monsters. When this monster reach, the yin-yang gets attacked, loses some health and yeah, you need to defend it by shooting at these enemies that are gonna be incoming. We have implemented the wave system, so basically enemies start spawning from time to time, you need to destroy them, and then the timer starts again, and you see that there is a lot of time here, and the reason is that you need to go to the left side and pick up ammo again. So you go here, fill up your ammo bar, and then hopefully you can keep defending the thing um, as long as you can, of course. Right now, the, the one big kind of gimmick, or the one big hook we have is that the very thing that you're trying to protect on this side is trying to kill you on this side and on this side you're also helpless, you don't have a way to defend yourself so it's kind of like this yin-yang, playful, I don't know, analogy if you want to call it which is like being pacifist and still being aggressive and depending on which side you are I think this part is very self-explanatory you can go here to this totem and then gain different weapons so very classic roguelike top-down shooter kind of thing, except now you're not shooting, you have a katana. Okay, but I think you get the gist of what we have here. We also have implemented a skill tree, which we're not going to be porting over because this was very, very uh, game jam, let's say, <laughs> a game jam version of a skill tree. Uh, we should definitely clean this thing up and make it actually good. And with that in place, and you knowing now how the game looked before, Let's see what we have been up to in Godot. So this is what we have right now up and running in Godot. The character is moving, you can aim and you can shoot, and you can move to the other side and the weapon disappears and you are uh, inverted with the color scheme. And the part here also works. This is the current version. I know it might look a little bit basic right now, but under the hood all of the functionality has been moved. So for example we used in Unity scriptable objects to configure the weapons. In Godot we're using resources to configure the weapons and in theory it's gonna be a very simple creation of the resources and then drag and dropping them into the correct folders and everything should work automatically and uh, we should already be having the same number of weapons and everything. So yeah, it looks very good for now. We uh, are estimating for the rest of the porting to take probably four four to three weeks, optimistically let's say three weeks left. And um, yeah, without further ado I now want to show you specifically what we have moved and how the architecture differs from the Unity version and the Godot version. So please keep in mind the Unity part is definitely still a game jam version. So there are a lot of stuff that you're gonna notice that might be not so clean. Please ignore that as we have been doing for the <laughs> past few weeks. We have, you know, the classic stuff. You have the main camera canvas for the UI stuff. So one very big difference in the way that we implemented the systems was that in Unity we have the player here and you see the effect of moving the character around and changing the color is working. And how we did that in Unity was that we have a player which owns two sprites. So the, the white version of the sprite and the black version of the sprite. The white version is on top of the black one and when you move the character to the left side, the white one is masked out, so it disappears and it reveals the black sprite which is behind. And probably there were better ways to implement this, but this was the most intuitive way we thought of at the time. We did this quite differently in Godot, and we managed to achieve this with only one sprite. So let's switch over to the other one. Back in Godot, we can see here that the player has only one sprite, 
and we set here the, the visibility to light mask 2 so that it will only be affected by lights at uh, layer 2. And then if you check out the world, so let's go here, we have these two areas and we have each of them defined as a light 2D node with the sprite as a background to stretch over the whole line. Specifically here in the white part, we have set the item call mask to 2 and the black texture here and mode mask we can achieve the same effect only with a one simple sprite which is going to make a bit of the programming effort easier so this is one big change we had and let's go back to unity specifically going for the player and how the mechanics are handled we have a player movements script which should be named player manager but we didn't do that at that time because game jam. But in the end, basically what's happening here is we have one big script, which has a lot of references and can take some scriptable objects like the skills ones here to define which skills the player can use. Then there's some sub components, like for example, the shooting controller, which has its own script and takes again, a bunch of other references to manage to be able to shoot and do stuff like that. And how we implemented the same thing in Godot. We have a few systems already implemented, like the weapon system. And the idea is that we have one basic script, which is called in our case, uh, player manager, finally. And this handles then all of the different subsystems. And it's gonna look like this one here. So basically we have the movement manager, the graphics manager, the weapons manager, each is going to be initialized and they inherit from this base manager. So the goal of this system here is that we are a little bit less coupled to the engine and can move the things cross Unity and Godot a little bit easier. Of course, not everything will be able to be ported 100% quickly like from one engine to another. But the good thing is that we can really separate the responsibilities and have a clear view where we are right now, for example, how much percentage of the movement has been ported already because the dash is missing specifically right now. And for the graphics, which parts of the animations are working and things like that. So we have assigned very specific responsibilities here for each of the scripts and they themselves then have something like a, um, like a initialization method and then some kind of on update method that we can call if we want them to be performing some kind of action over time. And with that, we have managed to move a lot of the functionality over, even though not 100% is working yet. We have commented a few parts of the coding out in cases where we were needing that. In some cases, we disabled the input. For example, the skills right now cannot use the key bindings yet. And once we have moved most of the coding over, then we can, let's say, turn the switches on see which stuff is working, if there are some kind of errors. And um, oh yeah, here you're seeing also something very funny. We're experimenting a little bit with data binding by creating a custom attribute with a path to a model. And then the idea would be that we have UI scripts that can take a path and then automatically sync to this property here so that we won't need to always write different scripts for the UI depending on what we want and caring about the least kind of like management of the dependencies and stuff like that. So the idea that would be that um, from the UI you would need zero code to be able to access some data that is accessible through this kind of data binding system. But this is a very, very early thing that doesn't really work yet, but it's going to work soon, hopefully, and it's going to make the development of the UI much, much easier. And then we have, yeah, you can see here, like, for example, we have the interface just empty because we want to completely overhaul the buff system. We have basic player managers. We created a pickable object just as an experiment. The bullet is also a GD script. So what I do here is I write GD before my scripts that require some kind of node functionality out of the box. Basically, I know now that this script definitely requires to be attached to a node. And um, I, we were doing the same thing in Unity. So all of the all of the scripts there that had the prefix UI in front of them in the backend, I know it's not maybe the best name, 
um, were related to the Unity engine and were supposed to be attached to some kind of game object. So anyways, we have um, started working on the game manager to be able to handle the waves. And in the past in Unity, that was again a mono behavior. It was requiring basically the game object to exist. Here, it's of course, it's requiring the game manager to exist. But in the end, we could just move this part of the coding away and it should in theory work as close as possible with the original design here. And hopefully it's not going to require us to move a lot of the coding. So yeah, this is a very basic setup we have right now. And the idea will be that we're going to take specific parts of the development process. For example, it was very interesting to create this kind of light to the mask system. And it's not super intuitive to work with. So probably we will be doing more of a tutorial series as a separate video than the devlogs because otherwise it would be very difficult for me to focus on the topic, right? So I would rather have here maybe just the general steps, the architecture a little bit, some very fun facts and stuff like that. And then there's going to be dedicated videos for how to port very specific systems. And this should give us the best of both worlds. For one, I can focus here on the devlogs to just develop and show you the architecture and just show you how the game looks right now. It's kind of design decisions we took and maybe some architectural, just grander, grander scheme decisions. And then we would have the dedicated videos for people who are interested in, for example, how would we port a very specific system from, from Unity to Godot like for example the masks or um, maybe the cin cinema machine stuff or something like that. So as we come across these topics, we will, we're will we going to be noting them down, what we did, these decisions, and we're going to be trying to publish as many videos as possible. For now, the next video is going to be about the automated deployment systems, the pipelines, CI, CD pipelines we created. And let me switch over to that one because that's also a topic I wanted to talk about in this develop. So of course we set up a very basic git setup in the beginning on our uh, self-hosted GitLabs server and of course git is important, we should all focus on git and this is some kind of temporary readme, we can ignore it. One thing that's very important for us is having an automated pipeline for building our projects and deploying them to the different stores we want to publish. So we had the setup for the Unity version and we wanted to have the same setup also for Godot as well. So basically we have here a GitLab server self-hosted. So we have a machine hanging over there or more like on the floor over there. It runs Docker and it has a self-hosted GitLab version. It's a community version. It doesn't have all of the features, but it's much more than we require. Basically we can push here so we can just commit and push. And then we have configured here a pipeline to run. And as you saw in the very, very beginning, basically what was happening here is like failed, trying to update, cancelled, 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 and it was not really working. And when it was working and the build was passing, the end result was that the game was just crashing immediately. And if you have seen the previous video I made with the startup bug when you're creating a C# -sharp project, th that's where this came from. Basically, we were one, we were failing miserably in the beginning. We were trying to download the, the artifacts, open them, and then it was immediately clashing. So, okay, let's see how we can pre reproduce the issue as minimalistically as we can. Yeah, if you want to see what the issue on the startup crash was specifically, you can go back to the previous video. For this one here, we just, at some point, were like, okay, we need some experts here. And I talked with some people on Discord, and one person in particular was very, very helpful. If you have some time here, check out LP Games out. He has done also game CI and CD for Unity. So if you're still in the Unity scene and have not set up an automated pipeline for your deployment and building of your game, then definitely check him out. He, his video helped me set it up in the first place in Unity. And accidentally then uh, I talked with him again without knowing that it's actually him. And um, we, Try to debug a little bit what was going on with my setup here and yes after some time we managed to make it work and now whenever i have an, a build i can here just download the windows archive so once it's finished downloading we can just put it onto our desktop then open it on windows 
and voila we have the most recent version of the game running and i notice oof, okay something's wrong here interesting the hand is not visible okay this will need to be debugged but in any case so after taking the time talking with him and setting everything up it worked and i have noted down some points on what kind of potential issues can occur probably some of the troubles we had were because i was still running the version 3.5.2 in godot but we all know that for the moment it's not possible to switch to 4 unless you are purely using gdscript if you want and plan to use some c sharp because you have ported it over from your game in unity then it still makes sense to use the 3.5.2 version because otherwise you cannot export web builds and android builds but still if you are just exporting for windows desktop then definitely you could use already uh yeah go to 4 and that's it from our side then um next videos are gonna be about setting up this pipeline potentially the masking thing we have a lot of stuff planned uh, but the time is very very little so if you appreciate it that uh, we're putting here a little bit of the effort to show us what we're going through then you can leave us a like and subscribe to the channel that would help us really really a lot out and then uh, see you around the next one bye